Hey, good afternoon, oh, everybody. So here we are today at Green Lake, uh, which is a fantastic park located in Seattle, Washington. Uh, initially, it was supposed to rain today, but you know, Seattle weather is so spontaneous that it could just change at any moment. And it's, the weather is just beautiful. I mean, just take a look at how many people are outside, just enjoying and taking advantage of all that Seattle has to offer. So here we are today with the lovely dogs, Lily and Poochie. So I have Spoochie for about three more days on Wednesday. I signed up for this program called Rover, which is a fantastic program for those who are looking to do some dog sitting. I mean, can you believe I actually get paid to watch people's dogs? That's awesome. So I actually learned something new today. And it's crazy that with all of the Black Lives protesting, police brutality, and I never knew that by saying all races, we're all one race, we're all equal. Like that is actually considered a very racial term actually. And at first I was like, what do you, like, what do you think? Like why? Why is that considered an all, a racist term when you say all races matter? But I guess it turns out it's kind of like saying, by, by not acknowledging the fact that let's say slavery existed and the whole discrimination among black people, for example, it's like saying by, this, by not acknowledging that like, no, we are all one race. It's to say that that never existed. And I kind of get that concept and philosophy actually, or that philosophy, but that, that rhetoric where saying like all races matter. It's like, yeah, technically it does, it's true, right? But only when we stop really, in my opinion, that we stop really analyzing race as a whole, right? This maybe, this could be a decades from now, centuries from now, but it's like when we no longer see people by their color, right? Black people, Asian people who are yellow or Indian or this shade of brown or whatever, right? If we could just all acknowledge that, yeah, we're just people at that point, then perhaps we could say that all races do, all races are the same, right? I don't know, you tell me. Anyways, let's go talk about what day 13 is all about today. So I haven't read the, the chapter from 31 Days to Masculinity. I have not had a chance to really look and see what day 13 is all about. So let's go ahead and take a look about that. Ah. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, shall we? All right, so day 13 challenge simply titled Memento Mori. So if you're not familiar with Memento Mori, it's actually what it's meant stand for? Remembering to die. Remembering to die. And actually this is a, uh, so let me explain. Let me uh, pull up my book, please. Oh my God, fucking book. Okay, so I want you to ask yourself this and I'm gonna ask myself the same thing. If you were to die tonight, what regret would you have, okay, what would you regret having left undone? Answer. Not having so much more fun than I could. Like okay. Be free. Be free. Okay, that's a good answer. No. All right, you got to answer. So, if you were to die tonight, what would what regrets would you have? That's essentially what it's asking. What regrets would you have? Let me tell you what mine are while she's thinking. So, one of mine is that I wish I joined the basketball team in high school. Mm. I've always had this theory that I wasn't good enough and that you had to be tall to be a basketball player. Because for us, that was my negative belief that I wasn't tall. I was Asian. Asians are meant to be, you know, to play basketball. So therefore, I wouldn't even make the team. I'm already selling myself short before I even try it out. You know, things like that. So, what about yours? Anything yet? It's not. Mine is not too specific, but along the same lines, to have fun, to to not care so much what people, what other people think. Okay, it's a good answer. So, question number two: What do you wish you had done more of? Mm. Laugh laugh what about me what do I wish I would have done more I mean I guess for me it's actually um, the concept of working harder actually mm -hmm. uh, we were watching I was watching this thing on Netflix yesterday it was uh, like spelling the the what the hell is that called spelling again bee. the spelling bee competition <laughs> scrims spelling bee competition of the United States and it's basically detailing a story of how like Indian Americans started becoming more prominent in the whole spelling bee competition and what are the key attributes of really why they became really good spellers i mean some of them are just uh what do you call it very very intellectually gifted i mean fright but actually that's not true it's one of it is that they actually worked hard and i think one of my biggest i guess you could say regrets for number two is that i wish that i had a better work ethic when i was a little kid because i looked at i look back at my life i don't know about you but i look back you know, as I was growing up watching these kids who were like, you know, anywhere from five years old to like 14, 15, who basically, like, let's say my life, I, you know, go, went to school, come home, and what the first thing I would do, I'd turn the TV on or I'd just play video games. You know, I'd get my homework done, but immediately afterwards, I would just go and play video games. I wish that I joined like a chess club. I wish I joined more school clubs, actually, that I could 
you know, basically broaden my horizon for learning because, you know, it does create better work ethics for when you're an adult now. And that's how you climb up the career ladder. And that's kind of wish that I had that now, you know. So that's kind of, I guess that's what I would spend more of my time on or had done more is just better be work ethics. Be more disciplined, yeah. Because that's, that's what my regret is, to not be disciplined. Not disciplined enough, you mean? I yeah, know. Yeah. Last question. Were the excuses you used to keep yourself from taking action valid? So basically meaning all of that negative belief that you had that held you back. Are they considered valid reasons for you to not achieve those? No. no. Did I don't you have any? That. Would you say, did you have any that yes. held you back? Like what? what? Mm. Like, would it be something like, oh, I'll, because of my race, that I'm not going to be good enough. Because of my height, I'm not going to be pretty enough or this or that. I think my race at one point mm-hmm. held me back or I thought. It would okay. Be a okay. For not trying something. So for me, going back, it's one of the things where, like, I grew, I went to uh, Clark Magnet High School, and a lot of the friends that I grew up with, I always considered to be smarter than me. And I always thought that smartness, like, innate ability to join calculus or, you know, physics, like, AP physics, for example, was because you were innately smart, and you were gifted to be smart. And those reasons are actually not valid at all. I realized, going back to my number one, is that, I, or, sorry, my number two was that, my work ethic was very, very poor. Again, I just did not apply myself. I always thought that studying was for losers and that, you know, you were a nerd if you studied. And I really wish that going back now so that I... you needed to come to you naturally. Yeah. I always thought that, you know, if you were good at physics, it's because you were naturally smart. If you were good at math, it's because you were naturally gifted at math. So looking, again, my valid reasons were completely off. Those are not valid reasons at all. And I just wish that I applied myself more. And that's where I started learning once I hit grad school that... It's not really about innate ability. It definitely does help to have talent, but it's more about how much you apply yourself and how much work ethic you really have. And so, yeah, my reasons of come not valid at all. So, it's an interesting day thirteen challenge. Actually, just thinking about remembering that death comes for all of us. And I know, I know a lot of times we think that all the things that we have, like our dogs, for example, that they're gonna last forever. Our parents are going to be there forever. Our friends are going to be there forever. But as I learned to grow, you know, I'm in my mid-30s now. It's like, you should learn to just appreciate the things that we have in our lives now. And just do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Just do it and not be afraid of the fear or the outcomes of what may or may not happen. Ouch. Sorry, that spoochy guy just jumped on my special parts. And so, yeah, I just want everyone to kind of think about that. It's kind of interesting to note. And it's such a beautiful day at Green Lake. We're just here having fun with our dogs. There's Lily. Lily over there pointing, doing her thing. And so, yeah, interesting day 13. I was actually going to do some drone shots of Green Lake, but I figured let's just hang out at the park for a little bit, and then and we'll do that, okay? Let's continue our Sunday. So, here we are at PCC. What are we ordering? What do we get? Everything for panini. We're making some panini sandwiches. Actually, I was walking by the chip section, and what do we see? What did I see? You know what I saw? Mm-hmm. I'm going to get some. This is what, this is what I saw. All right, look at this. Ah. Okay, so panini bread. What is panini bread? All right, let's go ahead and pick our cheeses. What kind of cheese would you like? I want white cheese, but it needs to melt. In white. Why not? Oh, look at all these types of cheeses. What should we get? Provolone it is. And for dessert, we got to get our mochi mango. Mochi mango. She's never had it before. You've never had it before? All right, now that we have all of the ingredients, let's make our perfect panini, shall we? This is what we're gonna be using today for our ingredients. Rather, eh, you get what I'm trying to say. We got our awesome, awesome super bread. All right, we need a banana for scale, no banana for scale. Mmm, yes, that. We're gonna be adding, obviously, some lettuce, romaine lettuce. Okay, I don't know if you guys saw this earlier. We bought some smoked turkey, oven roasted turkey. We got our provolone cheese. Not sure what the Thai chili peppers are for. Sliced tomatoes, onions, and of course, that. Let's try this right now, actually. All right, let's try this chip. Hmm. It tastes like barbecue. 
typical barbecue chips, but a little bit sweeter. I've never had Korean barbecue before. The, the, the sauce that they use to marinate, it's actually kind of a sweet marinade rather than like a spicy, smoky, or hickory. That's exactly what it tastes like. So, not bad. I still prefer... Cheers. I still prefer, we still prefer, the salt and vinegar uh, kettle chips. Those are the bomb. All right, enough talking, enough eating. Let's go prepare our panini sandwich. All right, let's start doing the bread. So in order to make the bread nice and crunchy, we're gonna add some spray to our olive oil. Okay, spray into our bread. Gosh, dumb. That way it's nice and crunchy. What do you think? Does that look good? It looks really good. Man. Looks good? Yep. Should we take it out? Um, I think we don't want it too dark, right? Because then it's hard to... Oh, this is perfect. Ooh, perfect. Wait. This, this will be the test. Because the cheese melted. Right, the cheese is on the other side. <laughs> okay, see. Okay, let's do... Yeah, it's melted. Yeah. After all that panini work, this is what our sandwich looks like. Mm, mm, mm. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Turkey. Chicken, lettuce, and something else. Ah! All right, what a great way to end our day today. So, just gonna finish up, have a sandwich, have some wine with some uh, rosé. The rose, the, we gotta be fancy and say rosé with some blueberries inside. So other than that, I hope everyone's doing well. And just gonna kind of enjoy the rest of my day, rest of my evening, and just, yeah, get ready for the work week. Take care, bye-bye.